Okay, I'll be reading part of the question again. The question says, an ellipse has a major axis of 120 millimeters and its foci are 80 millimeters apart. Its foci are 80 millimeters apart. And a question says, it says, construct the ellipse. That means, first of all, we have to construct the ellipse with those measurements and secondly it says measure and state the length of the major of the minor axis sorry and it says c says draw a tangent and a normal to the curve at a point p above the major axis and 35 to the right of the minor axis so we take that i just read this question so you can remember the question again now for the question it says an ellipse has a major axis of 120 millimeters. So first we'll be drawing is drawing the major axis, which is 120 millimeters. So we'll be drawing a line that is 120 millimeters long. Let's play with that. 120 millimeters long. So that's my line, 120 millimeters long. Now the question says, the focal points are 80 millimeters apart. What does that mean? See, the focal points are 80 millimeters apart. That means 80 millimeters from, uh, from the focal point. Now if the focal points are 80 millimeters apart, first of all, let us find the center of our major diameter. Let's find the center. Then after finding the center, at the center, you erect a perpendicular. We erect a perpendicular. So in, at this point, you use your protractor to draw a line at 90 degrees to that center point. So let's label it. We'll name here A, here B, and that center O. So at that point O, you erect a perpendicular. Now you can see the points from my perpendicular. So now let's draw the line. The line will be running through from O to that point of your 90 degrees, which you marked for the perpendicular. But you can make it run across. You can see that. That's what to do. Then the next thing to do next, what to do next is let's it says the focal points are 80 millimeters apart. Take note of that, 80 millimeters apart. So what we'll do is, from O, from O, you will draw, you measure 40. Since 80 is 80 meters apart, that means 80 divided by 2 for the two focal points, we'll be having it as 40, 40. So from O, draw, measure 40 millimeters from O, going towards A, mark that point. They measure 40 millimeters from O, going towards B, mark that point. Now, those two points are now your focal points. So you have it as F1 here, and you have it as F2. Now, if you measure the total distance from F1 to F2, it is absolutely 80 millimeters apart. Now, what we'll be doing next is we'll be finding the length of the major of the minor axis. And how do we know the length of the minor axis? How do we know? the length of the minor axis. The way we can get the length of the minor axis is this. You get the length, you get take the length OA. Take it as a radius with a, a compass OA. So take the length OA. Okay, I've done that. Then now, when after taking the length OA, with center F, with center F1, with center F1, Cut that line, cut the part of the line for the minor axis, cut it with center F1. Cut it with an arc. Then with that same radius, with center F2, intersect the arc you've already made. Now that point of intersection between those two arcs is the length of your minor axis. Is the length of the minor axis.
Okay, you can see that. That's the length of the minor axis. So at this point, what to do next is go since we've gotten since we've known our minor axis, we've known position of our minor axis. Okay, let me quickly outline the minor axis. Now, since we've done, we've discovered our minor axis using our focal points, what to do next is go back to the focal points. This is this distance F1 O. The distance F1 O divide it into in give into any number of equal parts. You could choose four, you could choose five. Okay, but let me let me take my measurements. Now, what I'll be doing, since mine is 40 millimeters apart. I'll be dividing it into four equal parts to make it easier for me. So I'll be dividing F1O into four equal parts and F2O into four equal parts. That will be giving me 10 millimeters for each division. You can see that. So at this point, I have my F1, my F1, 1, F1, 2, F1, 3. F21, F22, F23. You can see that. You can see that. The next thing to do is drawing arcs. So at this point, we'll be drawing arcs. At this point, I would like you to listen very carefully and pay attention because this point is the most important point of the construction. So take your take your compass. We'll be picking it one after the other. Take the radius, take the radius, take the radius B, or let's use A. Take the radius A, F11. Take the radius A, F11. I repeat, A, F11. A, F11. That means from A to 1 on that line, F1. Get that radius. After getting the radius, Place it on F1 as your center. Draw an arc. Draw an arc. Draw arcs. Now, with that same radius, take it to F2 with that same radius. Draw arcs. You can see that. Let's take the next one. Let's use A A F12. A F12. I'm cutting the red use. Take F still take F1 at the center. Draw another arc. Draw another arc. And this way too. Draw arcs. With that same radius, go to F1. Take F, sorry, go to F2 as your center, draw another arc, draw arcs there too. Now let's take the next radius, which is A, F, 1, 3. A, F, 1, 3. Place your, take it as center, you see F1, draw arcs, draw arcs. Now center F2 with that same radius, draw arcs. The next, the next one, the next one is A, F1, okay, let's call it A0 as the radius, A0. With that radius, take center F1, draw arcs. You see the arc, you draw, you draw your arc. Now with F2 at center, still draw your arc. Draw arc. You can see that. Now the next thing we'll be doing is taking this radius. A, 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 F2, 3. A, 
F2, 3. That means from A to 3 in F2, on the line F2. A, F2, 3. Can see that. A, F2, 3. Now with F1 as center, with the focal point 1 as center, intersect the arc. This can intersect, intersect this arc. Intersect this one. Also intersect this arc. Intersect it. Then now take it to F2 as a center. Intersect the next arc. I said this arc. I think I should be marking the points out here for you. So I have this point of intersection. I have this point. I have this point. I have this point. You can see that. Now the next radius is A F two two. A F two two. Now with F one as center. Cut the next arc. Cut the next arc. Cut it here. Now with F2 as center, cut this arc here. And cut this one here. Let's mark the point. Now the next one will be the next radius is. A F two one A F two one that's the next reduce the center F one cut your arc cut your arc and F center F two cut your arc cut your arc and cut your arc then take note of your point Okay, now you see how far we've gone. You can see how far we've gone. Now let's take this. Let's do this. Let's do this. So the next thing to do is using your French curve. You get your after getting all these points, you get your French curve. You make at the first instance, make your French curve to join A e and your first point here. Let's join A e and the first point. Can see that. Okay, let me introduce a bigger French curve. Name is bigger French curve. Now the best way to use a French curve is making sure that your French curve joins at le joins at least three points. Your French curve should join at least three points. So you keep adjusting your French curve on it is until you can touch at least three points at least okay. after I touch these three points draw your curve I've drawn my curve there then let's take under three points So the next three points I'm picking is where the, first, the point where it ended, this point where it ended is with my fixed point now again. So I'll pick it, that is our journey one, two, and three here, which is our minor houses. You can see that I've gotten that area, that region. Now let's take it for this. Let's join another three points here. So I'll be joining one, two, three, those three points.
I've joined those three points. Now I'll be joining this last point here, one, the next point, two, and this point, three. Let's join those points. Okay, you can see I've gotten half part of the ellipse. Now let's go to this other part. So this at this point, let's start from D again. Let's start from D. This point. So I'll be joining this point B, this point, and this point together with a core. Remember, keep adjusting your your French curve until it joins those three points. Okay, I've gotten this. Then you draw. While you're drawing, make sure you're applying at the same time, applying the curve at the same time. You can see that. Then now let me join the next point, which is one, this way it ended, two, and three. You can see that. So let me look for his point. Okay, I think I got that very fast this time around. See, I've completed our region. So let's come to this part. I'll be joining one, two, and three. So adjust your French curve until it touches those three points. Button that okay, you can see this part. What to the curve there now? Remaining this point one, this point two, and this point three. So I'll be joining those points as well. Okay. So this is my ellipse. I just generated the ellipse. Then let's go back to the question. I believe you followed me while I was constructing my ellipse. Let's go back to the question. The question said, it said, A, construct the ellipse. So advance, we've answered A. Then the B says, measure and state the length of the minor axis. You know how, I hope, I believe you still remember how we got the length of the minor axis. So now let's measure the length of the minor axis. As the question said, let's measure the length. Okay, the length is 90. So the length of minor axis is minor axis is equal 90 millimeters. That's the length of the minor axis. So answer question B. Then the, the question C says, draw a tangent and normal. So we have two things to draw more to the curve at a point P. At the point P, in this case, we'll be finding P. And it's where is P? We're going to find the P. It says P is located where is located 35 to the right of the minor axis. I seen it. It's located what 35 to the right of the minor axis. 35 to the right of the minor axis. So from this point zero, I'll be going 35 going up. 35 going up from zero. Let's take the measurement, 35 going up from 0. So this is the point 35. So at this point 35, I'll be going to the right. At 90 degrees, I'll be going to the right. You can do that with your protractor. But my ruler is, I, I've arranged my ruler in the way by I do 90 degrees without having to measure with my protractor. So to the right, trying to the right, I have it at this point. You can see this is my, 90, this is my P now. So let me mark that point very well. This point is P. This is my P. This point is my P now. From the question, from the construction of the question, that's my point P. So what am I going to do after getting P? Please pay attention. What I'm going to do after getting P is this. I draw a straight line from F1 to P. 
and also join P and F2 with a straight line. So I'll be drawing a line that is F1, P. The line is F1, P and P, F2. And P, F2. I see that. Have you seen that? Now, from those two lines I've drawn, I'll make sure extend the lines, extend those two lines, extend them, extend the two lines. I've extended my the two lines F one P. Then get your compass. Get your compass. Get your compass with P as center and a convenience radius. That means P the radius you, like, you, you, you prefer. With P as center and a convenience radius, draw an arc. Draw an arc. Now you will take a note. Anywhere that arc cuts, your, cuts the lines, anywhere you cut the two lines coming from F1 and F2, where you cut the line coming from F1, name that point P1. Where you cut the line coming from F2, name that point P2. I seen it. Good. Now we go to take another center. We'll be having now. We'll be having P1 and P2 as our new centers, just to draw the tangent. Just to draw the tangents. How are we going to be doing that? Now having our P1 and P2 as center, you keep your compass on either P1 or P2. They extend it to touch the other P. So I'll keep it, I'm placing mine on P2 and I extend my compass to touch P1. Once it touches P1, I draw an arc. I draw an arc. I'll be taking note of my arc. After drawing the arc, I will then keep with that same radius I placed on P1 as the next center. They intersect that arc. Intersect that arc. I'll mark the point of intersection of the two arcs. Now that point of intersection is the point where I'll be drawing my tangent from. You can see it here. So I'll keep my pen, I'll keep my, my place my ruler to touch both P and that point. My ruler will be touching P and that point. You can see that touching P and that point. Then I draw a straight line. I have to outline my line, make line outline. That line, the line I'm drawing now is the tangent. This line is now the tangent to this. Then the question also said, draw a normal. Construct a word. A normal construct a normal now for us to construct our normal what I'm going to do our normal must come from the point P our normal must come from the point P so I'll take the radius as that of P P1 I'll take that same radius with that same radius with that same radius I will cut my tangent at the other point I'll cut my tangent on the other side. Actually, I'll cut my tangent on this side. So I have the cut on this point and this point. With those two points as center on my tangent, with those two points as center, I will keep my compass on this point. So let's call it what? Let's call this point T1 and let's call this point T2. You can see that. So I keep my compass on T1, on T2. And extend it to touch T1. Then I draw an arc up this way. Draw an arc. Then with that same radius, I place it on T1. I intersect the arc. Now that point of intersection is the point for the tangent. So I place my compass, my place my ruler on P, touching that point. Then I draw a straight line. I'm outlining the line. Thank you. So this point, this line is the tangent, is the normal. So I have to name it look like normal. That's normal. And this is the tangent. And that's the tangent. Then this is the ellipse. And that's the ellipse. And look at this, which is the minor axis is what is 90. So take a close look at this. See that? So 
So I like always say your drawing paper must be neat before drawing and should remain neat after drawing. So don't forget that. Thank you so much for watching. I believe you paid attention to the construction and by now I believe you should be able to construct your ellipse and also do it again and normal to it. The method of the method of construction for the ellipse which I use is called for is called locus method. It's called locus method. That's the locus method of constructing ellipse. I use that method because I was being given my focal point. Because I was being given my focal point, that's why I used that method. And yet I was still to find my minor axis. So that method is the most efficient method I can use in achieving that. So please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to like, don't forget, don't forget to drop a comment about the videos so it can help improve the video publicity. Thank you so much. I still remain Mr. Apex James. Thank you.